want to make everybody aware of this book is the 2011 Southeastern Vegetable Handbook. Uh, if you're a commercial vegetable grower, and I guess it's useful at the home level also, the only problem is a lot of the, the chemicals recommended in this book is going to be for commercial applications. Uh, so the label won't be for a homeowner use. So I'm going to run through Dr. Kimball's presentation for you on the asparagus production. It's something a little bit different for this area. Uh, however, I think there's, uh, there's some really good markets for it, and that's what Dr. Kimball kind of stresses during this presentation. It's something a little different. It comes in during a time of the year that a lot of other things are not. Uh, basics of asparagus production is a member of the Lily family. It was grown originally over in ancient Greece. Uh, established planting. We're going to talk a little bit for, uh, productive and profitable for 15 to 20 years. Consistent wholesale and retail price. Excellent, excellent herbicides. You're looking at harvest February to March. This is one thing that makes it attractive in our area. There's not very many things that we have in our area coming off uh, between the months of February and March. Uh, establishment, you need a well-drained soil, preferably a sandy soil, no rocks or heavy soils. They like that kind of light, airy, well-drained soil, uh, which is typically what we have. Another, another good fit, weed-free, that's really important, especially like the, I think it was like about the first two years of production while we're trying to develop the root and crown system, uh, keep it weed free. The good thing about this is there is a very large list of herbicides that are approved for asparagus production. So we really do have an arsenal to choose from going after these weeds. But that's really important, especially the first two years of establishing. They are deeply rooted. You want to plant uh, about six inches deep. We're looking at taking our soil sample around zero to six and then another between the six and 12 inch profile. Lime and fertilizer, that six to 12 inch profile for establishment. Uh, here, six two to six eight pH range, that's nothing unusual. Sufficient P is needed to establish the crown and seedling. This is what we're working on that first first year or so of production is establishing establishing that crown and root system. Uh, just moderate levels of in. if anybody's ever produced tomatoes, watermelons, this actually looks really low to you. Uh, so just moderate amounts of in, 50 to 75 pounds of in. Uh, establishment using seed, you're looking at producing a year old seedlings to transplant. You're looking somewhere around 8,800 to 10,000 plants per acre at one to one and a half inch depth. Uh, or you can grow your, uh, grow transplants in greenhouse 12 weeks from seedling. Soak your seed for 24 hours prior to seeding. Again, use a well-drained seeding mix with a starter fertilizer in it. Of course, heat and mass will improve emergence. Very similar to growing out your own vegetable transplants. Uh, seed number is based on the percent germination. And, and, uh, in this talk, basically what Dr. Kimball had mentioned is that uh, for the cost difference and the ease difference, he primarily recommended establishment with transplants to use transplants for your establishment. Uh, so that'll, that'll kind of skip over the uh, growing your own. We'll skip that. Typical planting, this is what it looks like. You're planting in a small fir somewhere around about six inches deep four and a half to five inch on centers. That gives you somewhere around 8,700 to 10,000 plants to the acre. You're looking single row production, 10 to 12 plants between the row, uh, 10 to 12 feet between the plants. There again, is just another profile, kind of a uh, longitudinal shot of what the row bed would look like. Six to eight inch to the bottom here, planting on the, uh, about a three inch high little bed in the center right here. What you're doing is you're really kind of burying that, that crown and root area. And as it develops, you'll have crown and root all in this area. And as the asparagus gets up taller, you'll be clipping off the little head of the asparagus uh, up here above the soil level. And for the first two years, irrigation was really important on it, was keeping a plenty of moisture to this asparagus. Uh, and those trenches help you do that. Planting into furrows, cover crowns with two to three inches of soil after transplanting, gradually fill in furrow one to two inches of 
soil three to five successive shallow cultivations for weed control. You'll have these colored furrows by early to mid-July, so they won't stay like that long. Adequate moisture critical for early development. Do not let seedlings or crowns dry out, especially during the initial two to three months. Early moisture stress will result in the reduced yield. One, fruit quality. Whether you're talking about a new market, whether you're talking about a farmer's market, anything like that, fruit quality, really pay attention to that. Uh, you can take someone who has never shopped at a local farmer's market. They can come out and get a bad piece of fruit and you won't see them back at that farmer's market. Uh, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to the other man beside you that's sitting there trying to sell. Uh, everybody's out there, they want to carry a good quality product. 